Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. And now, here's Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back. You know what? Sometimes I'm just glad to be alive. <laughs> Oh, uh, gets very tiring, doesn't it? And uh, so, when you get where you're almost just you can't see anything bright in the future, just go back and replay one of my shows from the past, <laughs> because that's what I do. I look for the uh, the positives in the when you realize like how the economy is set up. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, how the economy is set up, what's happening right now. It's actually pretty good. You know, there, there are always a lot of negatives, but overall, I think it, the, a lot of the negative has already gone. Uh, and I think that things are going to start to turn up and I'm going to tell you why. And this is just, this is not just my opinion. I actually, th- here's how I form my opinions. I have partnerships with very large, actually the two largest asset management firms in the country, okay. the two largest in the country. And they provide research and they provide, uh, they communicate their communications. And so, and actually, I'm going to use one of them, uh, one of the communications they sent recently. And this one's from BlackRock. Uh, and so it kind of keeps you up to, to speed with what's happening because there are so many things going on at any single moment in time. Very difficult to do that by yourself. <laughs> I'm going to tell you it's impossible to do it by yourself, but the uh, uh, even when somebody else is doing most the, uh, a huge amount of work, it's still a lot of effort because you have to read what all their analysts are writing about. And I think it's, uh, but it's overall it's a really good thing. I just, you know, when I first started in this industry, I was thinking, where in the world would anybody find time to do all this if they didn't, uh, if they weren't in the profession? And now I'm going. Where in the world does anybody find time, <laughs> even those that are in the profession, because there are just so many more avenues and venues. And uh, I just like to stick with my favorites. And uh, that would be BlackRock, Fidelity. Vanguard puts out some pretty nice stuff, too. The uh, There are some various websites out there that I like to refer to every once in a while. But uh, one of the reasons I like to use the, the larger groups even though they're doing a lot of things that we can't necessarily do um, because of our their size, uh, we can still find other ways to achieve the same goals that they have. Uh, and Or you can use one of the products that, that they are using. I mean, they're trying to take care, advantage of every economic situation that comes up. So anyway, that's a, a little insight into... You know, what the Bullington Capital Management practice is is kind of all about. We're reading research and uh, trying to bring that to our clients, and uh, because I know it's incredibly difficult to come by the amount of time that it takes to do all this reading. So anyway, uh, along those lines, I just wanted to I highlighted a paragraph from an article that I printed out. I'm not going to read the entire article because it's huge, and but I did highlight a couple areas that I thought were uh, most pertinent. And this one starts off almost every month this year, 
The discounts on financial assets from their year-end 2021 prices have gotten larger. That means the prices have gone down. Leaving the S&P 500 with its worst first half of the year return since 1962. Wow. And in parentheses, it says, narrowly avoiding its worst first half since the Great Depression. <laughs> it was almost as bad as the Great Depression. That, that's crazy. Um, the United States Treasury Index has never had such a poor first half of the year return since its inception in 1973. And by some measures, the 10-year Treasury note has, astoundingly, experienced its worst half, first half since 1788. I didn't even know they had records going back that far. In fact, it's funny because it goes on to say, at least according to Deutsche Bank research as of July 1st, that's a German bank. <laughs> and why do we not have those records? Anyway, household names like Visa Bonds, and I think that was a uh, typo. I think it's just Visa. And the ARC Fund, ARC was a, is a very popular technology fund are off 35% and 75% off their 2021 prices. That means they're down by, one of them's down a third, the other one's down 75% from their high prices reached in 2021. Yet market participants do not seem to be attracted to these assets the way consumers are drawn to discounted T-shirts or televisions. What they're saying is when things go on sale in a store, you know, people flock to buy them. But when stocks go on sale... Nobody wants to touch them. And they're pointing out that, yeah, that, that's one of the major problems with investors who um, don't put a lot of time, effort, or energy into this kind of stuff is that they have a tendency not to make the best decisions. And when they're making them based on price movement, instead of looking at a company and saying, hey, this is a better deal than it was six months ago, they're saying, I'm getting the heck out of here after the losses have already been taken. So it is very difficult not to want to do that sometimes. If you really believe in the company and you really like the company and the company's got, if you can explain it to, say, a fifth grader, that's one of the um, items I like to, to use. Uh, I think I've read both Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch talked about that a long time ago. You should be able to explain it to a fifth grader or with a crayon. <laughs> and uh, one of them said the one thing, the other said the other. But anyway, it should be relatively simple. I, I'll give you an example. So I own Discover Financial Services. It's a credit card company. They're the third uh, largest, or were the third largest. I don't know if that's still true or not, quite frankly. But they're a large credit card company. They've been around for an extremely long time period. I look at the rate of returns that these guys have on the invested capital. I look at the growth in sales. Um, how they're able to maintain their profit margins. And so I looked at it, I go, okay, yeah, that's good. I, and I understand the business. You know, it, when people go to Amazon, they're going to have to pay with something. And a lot of them are paying with Discover. And Discover's not the big giant. The two, the two giants are Visa and MasterCard in that industry. Uh, Visa and MasterCard account for about 85% of that industry. Okay. So if you, personally, this is a little contrarian here. I'm thinking instead of the big getting bigger, I mean, there's not much more they can can gobble up. They, they're they not going to be able to take that last 15% because the FTC, I'm sure, would be stepping in. Who has the better chance of increasing their business? Somebody who's already 85% of the market or somebody who's only 15? That should tell you something about my personality. Yeah, the harder the route, the better I like it. <laughs> I've always hated that about myself. The uh, Just kidding. Um but I think there's a lot of potential for growth there in the future. And uh, so anyway, it's worth a position in my portfolios. And by the way, I also know that that stock is in several of the exchange traded funds that I own. So and that's one of the reasons I don't put more than 5% of my total principal into one stock because I've already got most of my money is in exchange traded funds, which I really like a lot. But I don't want to put more than 5% outside of that because then I would, I'm probably closer to 10% of my total. And that's a big position for me. <laughs> that's a really big position. So, uh, in fact, I would be uh, thrown out of the you know most pension fund. Um, I don't know what they call it, the trustees anymore because 
my portfolio is considered too concentrated. I've got five percent of my uh, a total in one stock. That they're not gonna. That's not gonna fly. <laughs> not for the like Oprahs or you know uh, any big pension fund that's that's got regulators <laughs> looking at the holdings. I'm gonna have to be a lot more diversified than that, and I get it. And that's one of the advantages that you have when you're an individual investor is you can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this, and uh, as long as it's not too crazy, I, w- I would never put more than 10% of my money in one stock. I just won't do it. And I know a long time ago, I, I used to only hold 10 stocks. Well, I was that was a different day. Stocks behaved a lot differently. They weren't nearly as fast, up or down. And uh, it's not as it's not as safe to do that anymore. If it ever was safe, you really had to know what you were doing. And there's always a large element of luck involved. And uh, so uh, anyway, I'm going to get off that that subject and just go back to uh, what these guys were saying is the first half of the year, bond prices have just gotten crushed. And this is one of the reasons that if you're not holding short term bonds, I mean, super short term bonds, you're probably down more than 10 percent. Those indexes that they're talking about, the government bond indexes are down more than 12 percent this year. It's one of the worst years they've ever had. Now, what they're pointing that out now, and I think it's a little bit after the fact, and a lot of people think that, well, that's just going to continue on going. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure that's going to keep going down that way. And in fact, I think at this point in time, you, you might want to be taking a look at the fixed income opportunities that are out there because they may be right about another um, idea that they have that they talked about and that. They think that it now may be the time to start increasing your exposure to bonds. Why? Well, if they stop raising interest rates or if they slow down on the rate of interest rate increases and they're very marginal, then bond prices are probably going to go back up again somewhat. And if they start to actually get to a point maybe 12, 18 months from now where they say, okay, you know, we're good. And we can start lowering interest rates again. If, if that happens, those bond prices are going to jump up. Okay. So what they're saying is, is that we think it's okay to dip your toe into the water. And uh, one of the, the uh, things, if I go back further in, along in that article, and by the way, if you'd like an, uh, a copy of this article, just email me. I'll send it out to you. It's bill at bullingtoncapital.com or just go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com. Uh, one of the things they're, they're saying is that this may be a good time to increase the bond exposure. You might get better risk-adjusted returns in bonds than you do in stocks, particularly if they do start lowering interest rates. If they start lowering interest rates, even if it's a year from now, there's a really good chance the bond market's going to beat the stock market. Why? Because when interest rates go down, bond prices go up. When if if and they're not going to wait for that, by the way, it's always what they think the big money managers forecast. They're paid to forecast. If the big money managers think that interest rates are going down, they're not going to wait. They're going to start buying bonds and everybody's going to wonder why. And then when interest rates go down or the economy um, cools off and bond prices are already up. 12 15 percent or so people are going to go oh that's why yeah we'll see those guys thought about that ahead of time and that's hopefully what we're paying our our managers to do for us is to think about that stuff ahead of time um, and by the way if you're not comfortable uh, holding bond funds or bond etfs um, you can actually uh, we've got a, a an agreement through fidelity we can put together bond portfolios for you i, I would just hold treasuries or, or cds and CDs, by the way, we're going to talk a little bit more about that when I come back because CDs are a, uh, uh, they trade like bonds. I mean, there, there's a market, there's a secondary market, and I'll explain what that is too. I just know that I, I'm coming up on a commercial break, and yep, there's the sound. So you're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. In the dark and all the Growing comfortable Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? 
Anthony was working a dead-end job. I was surviving, but you know, I wasn't getting ahead anymore. A friend told him about my computer career. She's like, I'm already in the program. She's like, you'd be crazy if you don't do it. So I jumped right in and have not regretted it. Anthony did it all online. All you got to do is have an internet connection, and you can do it. Become an IT pro in just months with zero experience at mycomputercareer.edu. You need to check out my computer career. If it worked for me, it'll definitely work for you, too. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. Always Right Radio with Bob France. Who is in the way of Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Alexandria Damasio Cortez, Bernie Sanders? Who is in the way of them deconstructing this country and rebuilding it as a Green New Deal, globalist run organization in which the people that have enjoyed independence and freedom for 250 years are now subjugated to the whims of a global world order? Who's standing in the way of that? Well, you are. I am. The American people are. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on The Answer. And Odyssey. From an idea that started in 1967, Our Lady of the Wayside has grown to serve almost 900 children and adults with developmental disabilities throughout Northeast Ohio. It's an operation that is still growing thanks to tremendous support and generous donations like the Wayside's car donation program. You can donate your ride to the Wayside for a great tax write-off by calling 1-800-368-6262. The Wayside is also looking for people to join their team. They hire for attitude and train for skills. Visit thewayside.org to apply. Today. Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook. Vacation Fixation. The latest music from Ireland brought here just for you. It's the Hooli Hour, Sundays at 5 p.m. on AM 1420. The Answer. Is it finally time to update your bathroom? Bath Planet, a division of Joyce Factory Direct, specializes in replacing and converting old showers and tubs into new beautiful bathrooms in as little as one day. We have transformed thousands of bathrooms just like yours into a spa-like oasis that has homeowners excited to use their new bathtub or shower. Right now, all bath installations are 50% off, so call to schedule a free consultation with on-the-spot pricing. 440-243-5700 or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. I was thinking to myself, made a list of all my mistakes. Oh, I wish I could have run to you and tell you all about my heartbreak. And I wondered to myself, wait a minute, am I even on the right path now? Had a couple wins, but I got knocked down. But I know that you are here right now, and you say, Ooh, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. Ooh, you gotta get up, up again. And we're back. Hey, that song is very pertinent. <laughs> That's the life of an investor <laughs> right there. You got to get back up again. Hang on. The, uh, yeah, things will get better. In fact, you know, I think there's a, a really good possibility. One of the reasons I, I like the stuff that comes out of Vanguard, Fidelity, um, BlackRock, these guys are telling you, they're they're observing what's happening and telling you why it's happening, but also what they think may happen or where the probabilities are the best going forward. And I really liked the this article a lot. If you want it, I can send it to you. There's a lot of stuff in there, by the way, that if you haven't been reading this for a very long time period, you're going to have to get out your dictionary of financial and accounting terms. Um, but 
So that's why I'm trying to just bring the highlights to it, to my program. What, is it all, what does all this mean? And I, I think what it's pointing to is that we they feel like we're in a maybe a, a, a point where, you know, when you, you see the bond markets are down, but they're, they actually over the past month or so, they've gone up fairly significantly. And then we may have passed an inflection point, or at least we may be near a bottom in declining bond prices. Um, and the stock market, by the way, it's still down fairly significantly from where it was, from where it peaked back in January. Uh, it's down about 10% and was down a little over 20. So there have been a lot of outflows from stock funds and going into cash. That's there have been outflows from stocks and bonds that has been going into cash. Well, there are some good places for that money. If you have a, a enough money, you can buy CDs or treasuries. I buy them for my client. We've been buying them this year as quick as we can get to them. And, uh, or we've been holding a super short-term bond fund that's also holding treasuries and, and AAA corporate short-term bonds. Uh, I, at this stage of the game, I, if I have my choice, I'd probably take the treasuries or the CDs. And, uh, you know, that's part of our portfolio. It's really had a stabilizing effect. I think it's going to continue to have a stabilizing effect. I think that, you know, we've talked a little bit about the fixed index annuities. I think the insurance companies that uh, stand behind the guarantees on those products, this is a very good position for them to be in right now. They're actually earning nice, uh, uh, excellent returns on their bonds on the bonds that they hold in their general accounts. So it's a good thing for them. Why is that good for us? Well, if you are if you want to guarantee a higher rate of in- income, then you can get those, the highest rates of income streams right now come from fixed index annuities. Those are the highest guaranteed rates of income that, that you can get. And there are a bunch of insurance companies that do it. And all those companies that do that, they invest the money they guarantee a rate of return for you. Uh, the other guarantees, whether your family is going to get money when you die or not, that's those are specific to their contracts. So you have to look at that too. Uh, it, it can be very complicated very quickly, but the bottom line is they're investing money out into bonds and high yield bonds, and uh, uh, they make lo- they do all kinds of stuff. Okay, but the background, the environment for them is very good right now and they're actually getting a little stronger that means they're able to pay much larger claims uh they're they're setting aside more money to be able to pay future claims that that's a good thing that's a really good thing so i think if you are uh uh, looking at some sort of a fixed index annuity you need to get with somebody what what does that do that what does the fixed index annuity do well it's kind of like um Actually, it's unique. When you invest in it, they give you a schedule and they say, okay, this is the amount of income that you could get and we're going to put that in writing and we're going to give you a contract that says you you are entitled to this. So that part of it, it it's basically in writing. This is the worst amount of income that you could generate from this investment. And then they pay it for you. Depending on what you select, you can get it for the rest of your life if you'd like to. The uh, You can get it for 10 years if you'd like to. Um, if you're only going 10 years, it's a higher rate of return. Uh, I'm not so sure I would do that in most cases because I know a lot of people don't think they're going to live 10 years, but you never know. You know, if, if you took the 10 year guarantee and you live to your number 11, now what? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And some of them, uh, you don't have to leave any money to any beneficiary. So if you're single and you've never had children, uh, you can, you just are, concerned about maximizing your your own income, that might be a good option. If you have children and you have a a spouse that you care about, then you may want to utilize an option that leaves money to them when something happens to you. But that's all stuff that, you know, us retirement income planners, that's what we talk about a lot to various people. Uh, And it's all over the map. And, And by the way, there is no one right way. There's no wrong, one right way. Why? Because everybody's situation is a little bit different. And everybody's tolerance for risk is a little bit different. So it's pretty challenging 
actually. It's challenging for the individuals, and it's challenging for the people that work with them. Keeping up with all the various options, I mean, there are tons of them. And I think a lot of the companies out there right now, I think this is probably a really good time to be looking at those products because it, the um, as the insurance company's business improves, they'll re, they'll improve somewhat on some of their offers. And the offers were actually pretty good for the past three or four years. So, I mean, I didn't see anything wrong with that. And one of the benefits, too, of having a stronger financial uh, foundation is that the existing business that you have out there, is, it's a lot easier to, to pay the claims on. So anyway, I feel like I've uh, beaten that topic to death. <laughs> if you like, if you hear something on this show that you want more uh, information on, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll try to get to you as quickly as I possibly can. And uh, anyway, this is something else in that article that I thought was interesting. So I'll just uh, read it here for you. There are a number of complex, uncertain, and illiquid conditions that suggest that financial markets are in a more fragile state than is the the United States consumer, and therefore might be uh, the first part of the economy to break if this tightening cycle becomes overextended. What that means in English, if they keep raising interest rates, the economy is likely to slow down pretty quickly because it's showing those signs. Okay. And they, they go on to say, first, most major currencies other than the U.S. dollar have weakened. That means they've dropped in value. And in some cases, rather dramatically. And we continue to believe in the anti-fragile nature, nature of U.S. dollars. That means they think that the U.S. dollar is good. As a portfolio allocation, some of it in cash. Okay, yes, you should put some U.S. dollars in cash. This is more for an institutional investor. Your fund manager should be doing this, by the way. And if they're not, hopefully they... Also read BlackRock, which I'm sure many of them do. Anyway, much of the world is still dependent on the U.S. uh, US dollar for trade and commerce. While the U.S. economy economy is just 15% of world GDP, the dollar makes up two-thirds of emerging market external debt. That is hilarious. The dollar makes up two-thirds of emerging market external debt. That's a large chunk of that. Anyway, foreign exchange reserves and global securities issuance, while 70% of world GDP is pegged to the dollar as an anchor currency. Remember all these conspiracy theory guys out saying there's going to be one world currency. There's going to be be one world. Uh, Yeah, you might have heard of it. It's called the dollar. (laughs) We're we're at 70% of uh, now. So there's only 30%. That's pretty funny. Anyway, that means when dollars are being withdrawn from the financial system, as financial conditions tighten and liquidity is withdrawn, that means if they are raising interest rates and increasing reserve requirements, which almost nobody does, so it's pretty much just raising interest rates, the price of dollars rises in relative terms as the world is forced to contend with a shrinking supply. Now, there are... uh, There are good points and bad points to that, by the way. Um, the, The bottom line to this whole thing is we're probably past the scariest parts if we stay on the current trajectory. If we stay on the path we're on, and we're probably past the worst parts. And if not, you know, they may have to continue to raise interest rates. They may have to uh, increase reserve requirements, something they haven't done in an incredibly long time period. And that will really put the brakes on the kind of normally that kind of behavior happens when thing prices are are out of control because demand is just so high uh, that people will buy anything no matter how much you charge them for it. Kind of like the '70s and early '80s, you know, interest rates. I, I think Treasuries got up to 15 percent at one point in time. Long term Treasuries. That's cr- talk about crazy. 15 percent, and people didn't realize. That Peter Lynch, who was long regarded as one of the top stock pickers in the uh, in the world, had forty percent. It was either forty or fifty percent of the money in the fund that he managed in long term treasuries. <laughs> he wasn't buying stocks with that. He was buying U.S. government bonds. Why? Because he knew interest rates had never been that high. And by the way, he didn't he didn't catch it at the exact right time. It was about eighteen months after 
the bond prices actually started moving up quickly that he started buying and he didn't sell them when they peaked. He bought the when he bought the bonds, the prices were going up because everybody wanted 15 percent. The uh, prices were going up and they, they were probably around 13 percent by the time he started buying them. 13 percent was still good. Long term track record of the S&P 500 back in those days was it was about nine percent a year. Yeah, we hadn't had the uh, 20% five-year run from uh, 80 to 85 yet, and we didn't have that big run in 96 to uh, uh, 2002. So those two big, you take those two big runs out of the U.S. stock market, the 10 years over the past 100 years, the, the performance drops a mile. <laughs> Don't have time to go back and explain that. But the bottom line is this. Right now, the economy looks like it's it's in pretty decent shape, particularly for what is going on. Nobody is talking about that, by the way. This has all been happening while we've had a pandemic, and there's a war going on in some of the more advanced economies and countries in the world. They're all kind of participating from the outside, but the... Uh, you know, this is that's a little nuts. When they say it's different this time, it is really different this time. So to have the, the resilience that stock markets have shown you know, around the world, that's pretty amazing. That's that's actually flabbergasting. And uh, going forward, I think things will probably improve a little bit. I really think things will probably improve a little bit. And that's basically what these guys are saying. And they're also saying, but be careful. <laughs> and by the way, the opportunities in bonds relative to stocks, they, the opportunities may in fact be higher in bonds right now. So if you are looking around, uh, you want to see what I'm doing, what we're doing in our office, just give us a call. Now, we've been buying short-term treasuries now, uh, or we've been buying the short-term bond fund. My, my preference, if I could just snap my fingers would be to put everybody in a uh, two-year treasury or a two-year CD. And that would be my uh, preference. You're still going to have to have stocks because the interest rates on those, you're, you're talking 25 3%, somewhere around that range for a short-term product. The, uh, uh, that's not enough to combat inflation. So you're still going to have to have stocks. So you should have a diversified stock. In other words, you still need a good mix. But I don't think you need to be as heavy in stocks as we have in the past because there's a really good chance as BlackRock is pointing out that bonds may outperform stocks over the next couple of years you know and that's I can see what they're talking about and it's particularly if they if something happens and they take the the brakes off if they start to lower interest rates again um, man you're gonna see bond prices jump a mile and I used to hold a lot of high yield bonds. I, I don't hold as much anymore. And since I hear the music, I'm probably going to have to wait until next week to let you know about that. Is, are we at the third? Oh, no. Sorry about that. I'll let you know as soon as we come back from these commercial messages. <laughs> Hang on. Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook. Vacation Fixation. I'll always remember Andy's first words to me. I didn't even know we had an ad on Craigslist. 
Not good when you're calling about a Craigslist job posting. Despite that, we talked for hours and Andy hired me right there on the spot. I was the first non-family member plumber in the business, but it felt like I was immediately adopted into their family. It still feels that way for me and everybody at Why It Works. It's why Mama Ruth still cooks breakfast for everyone. The best part of being a plumber here is the support you get from everybody. One of the earliest solo jobs I had was working in a mansion with a huge indoor pool and a super fancy water heater system. So I called Andy for some advice. He dropped what he was doing, drove over an hour and a half, and trained me and showed me what to do. And that's not an exception. That's typical. That's why we want to get things wallakadoodle perfect for our customers. I'm Jamal, and if you're a plumber that wants in, skip the Craigslist ad, call us direct. Consider it done at whyamorps.com. License number 30185. No doubt about it, we're spending more time at home, which is the perfect time to make it more functional and beautiful. Hi, Ed Flash Ferrance here for Artistic Renovations, Northeast Ohio's premier and award-winning remodeler. Artistic did a fantastic job with our kitchen in 2016, and last year, they were back for the master bath. Oh, my word. Do yourself a favor and go to artisticreno.com. Believe me, you'll love their ideas and without question, the finished product. For a virtual consultation, call 216-520-0838 or visit Artistic ArtisticReno.com. Thinking about updating your home? Well, Joyce Factory Direct specializes in replacing old, outdated windows. Proudly made right here in Cleveland, Joyce Windows features their exclusive Smart Shield High Performance Glass, which means you'll be getting the most energy efficient windows for your home directly from the factory. Customers just love how much warmer their house is and how easy their new windows operate and clean. Right now, you can save 50% on all installations. Just call to schedule a free consultation with on the spot pricing 440 243 5700 or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. Looking for a great way to save on taxes? Look no more. Just call Our Lady of the Wayside at 1-800-368-6262 and ask about their car donation program. It's simple and it works for everyone involved. You donate your ride, you write off the selling price, and the money goes to help the physically and mentally challenged citizens served by Our Lady of the Wayside. The number to call, 1-800-368-6262. Will you want more, so get more. Donate your ride to Our Lady of the Wayside. back this is bill bullington i'm here every saturday morning from 11 to noon and you can actually reach out to me if you'd like to my website's bullingtoncapital.com uh, or you can call us in the office 330-664-0700 that number is 330-664-0700 and i'll be glad to try to help you uh, map out an investment strategy for retirement to get you there, and once you're there, make sure that uh, we can do everything in our power to make sure that your money lives as long as you do. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Sometimes it's not so easy. That, uh, in fact, I I would argue the last two or three years have been really tough because normally the bonds that you're holding in your portfolio, normally they would be helping. Uh, carry the portfolio and keep it from dropping as much. But bond funds, actually, since January of 2021, the average fund's down around 14% or so. Now, you have gotten income from that during that time period, so that that's you have to take that into account. They, they actually, you wouldn't be down 14% if you were reinvesting the income. The problem is most people that are invested heavily in bond funds are using that income to supplement their other income. So 
yeah, they're down right around 14% on their bonds. Not usual. That is definitely out of the ordinary. In fact, I think we started off the show talking about how infrequently that happened and how some of the uh, bonds are have their worst year-to-date returns that they've ever recorded. So why am I talking about all this? Um, because, first of all, bonds are a big part of almost everybody's portfolio. They haven't been helping a lot. If you're wondering why you're looking at your portfolio and you're saying, oh, I don't you know, I think this should be doing better than that. Well, this is probably one of the reasons that it, this is happening. Uh, having said that, there's a, a pretty good chance signs are starting to show up that this may be about to reverse course. But I would not bank heavily on that um, because just like everything else in the stock market, in the realm of all possibilities, all things are possible. In other words, it could go up or down, and we don't know. It's not just the stock market. It's also the bond market. It's financial markets in general. In the long run, there are certain things that happen, like the economy is still growing. Worldwide, economies are still growing. That's a good thing, especially I'm, I'm just amazed that they're still showing some growth. We've shown two significant uh, uh, quarters back-to-back of slower growth, but it's still growth. It's just not growing as fast as it was. Now, that was, oh, that's technically the definition of a recession. So we're already in recession, which I think is interesting because if you, again, if you look at that, markets always are, not always, but more often than not, markets will actually go down or increase several months in advance of the economic data that comes out. Uh, and that's very confusing for an awful lot of people who want to be able to look at something and have it tell them what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, we all want that. You know, unfortunately, that does not exist. <laughs> you have to take a look at what's going on right now and then try to figure out, OK, what are the what things have caused that? And what is the what are the probabilities of that persisting? And the probabilities are always about 50-50, by the way. It's either going to go up or down. There, there's only two directions. So the probabilities <laughs> are up or down 50-50. What happens if it goes, what happens if inflation keeps going up? You know, if it comes back and surprises us. Okay. If it keeps going up, interest rates are probably going to go higher, and we're going to see more of what we've seen over the past 12 to 18 months. What happens if interest rates go down? If interest rates go down, probably have some money that's been coming out of stock markets and bond markets and going into cash, that money probably starts to come back into the market. At some point in time, and this is one of the reasons I like having like super long-term outlooks, at some point in time, the money's got to come out of cash and go into financial markets. Why? Because we haven't settled Mars yet. There's no other market. <laughs> These are the only markets that you have. So it's either going to be in cash or it's going to be in financial markets. And sooner or later, you know, cash does not pay a whole lot right now, if you haven't noticed. And very difficult to earn anything, uh, enough money to be able to supplement or re average retirement, leaving your money in cash. So you've got the bond market, you've got the stock market, um, now you've got all the... You can put your money in real estate. You can put your money in uh, collectibles. There, there's a bunch of other sub or smaller categories that you can invest in. And that kind of stuff is just out of reach for the average person, even the above average person, especially if you're above average, above average person who's in their 40s, 50s, or 60s and still has a, a fairly active lifestyle. Uh, you're not going to have time for that. So... I would stick with either you go into the bond market, go into the stock market. If you're going to get into uh, real assets, I would probably try to use a fund out there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that today. If you're getting closer to retirement, I would look at the fixed indexed products for a portion of your fixed income. I think that makes a lot of sense. Those aren't bonds. They're not CDs. They're basically contracts that you make with an insurance company, 
You give them the money, the insurance company guarantees you a certain amount of income for the rest of your life. Okay, and that's the, one of the more popular ones. Now, there are all kinds of variations on that. So before you start to uh, um, start generating ideas, you should probably talk to somebody about that and talk to them about what you're trying to do with that money. Is this going to be money you're going to live off of? Uh, is this going to be money that you expect to leave to your kids? Would you like to do both? Uh, most people would like to do both. So once you sit down, once you've got a, a few questions answered, it's a lot easier to narrow down those topics to the ones that pertain to you, which again, comes back to, uh, I think it's on my, I think it's still on my website. We're not trying to, to come up with the best of anything. What we're trying to do is come up with the best for you because everybody's situations are different. Everybody feels differently about risk. Now, most people overestimate, by the way, the amount of risk that they're willing to take. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that that's just the way it is. We're not, my, I have a questionnaire, and it says, how much of a decline in your portfolio are you willing to accept in an effort to reach your goals? Because it's not a straight line. You're not going to go, uh, hey, 10% a year, tax-free, uh, complete liquidity. Yeah, that's a pipe dream. Ned? That hasn't, that's never existed. Well, actually, it existed for a very short time period. Remember I was, we were talking about the treasuries <laughs> when they were paying 15%? Okay, that went away. And I know a lot of people are waiting for that to come back. But see, the inflation rate, when they were paying that much in interest, was substantially higher than the inflation rates that we have today. If you can imagine that. I remember, I'm old enough to remember that. I remember getting a C on a speech I gave because gasoline prices had gotten up to, I think it was 40 cents a gallon. And I was saying they were, I was reading out, out of an article. It wasn't something I came up with on my own. I reported in my speech uh, some information that I had read in a magazine article somewhere, and I footnoted it, that gas prices were probably going to $1.38. And my teacher and speech teacher was so appalled that she gave me an A for presentation, uh, an A for the organization and how this speech was written, and an F <laughs> for the content because there's no way prices are going to $1.38 a gallon. That just ain't happening. Um, <laughs> you see that a lot. But uh, I was so upset. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. The, uh, I didn't say, I'm not the one that came up with that number. Here's where it, this article came up with the number. I think it was Business Week. But anyway, that was a long time ago. Pretty funny how people respond to that. Her giving me an F for the inaccuracy of the content was her own bias uh, or her own fear of prices being that high. And I, you know, I didn't even think about it. I probably should have asked her how many miles she had to drive to get to school every day. Cause that, that probably had a really big impact <laughs> on her reaction to that. So, uh, bottom line is that's where I came up with the saying that, you know, in the realm of all possibilities, all things are possible. That's not where I came up with it. That's where I started coming up with it. And, uh, anyway, so when interest rates get up really, really, really high, and then they start to come down again, um, that can be really good for bonds. If interest, their interest rates aren't that high right now, but if they were to come back down to where they were two years ago, okay, then you would see bonds would outperform stocks probably by a lot. If we stay on the path that we're on now, then bond prices probably get a little bit lower. I don't think they're going to get a ton lower. If they lowered interest rates again, they would just come flying right back up the bond prices. So you just have to be a little bit careful and you got to think about what you need. And one of the things I, I, I want to start doing on, on this program in particular is to break this stuff down. So it's a little simpler. Like how much money do you need to be able to supply uh, supplement social security or whatever pensions you have to be able to uh, lead the lifestyle you want to leave when you lead, when you retire, if you're in your forties and fifties, you guys are the ones that should be listening up. Okay, you know, you're getting closer to retirement and at the current inflation rate, it's going to take a lot more money. You hear what I'm saying? That number that you need, let's say it's 
forty thousand dollars in today's dollars plus I get my thirty five hundred bucks a month from Social Security, which is again roughly forty thousand, eighty thousand dollars, and I only have sixty thousand dollars in in household expenses. That's great. That's awesome. The uh, the problem is if you're going to only withdraw four percent, you're going to need a million bucks to be able to do that. Now, if you got a million dollars, no sweat, you're good. Just get a diversified stock portfolio, set up a systematic withdrawal program, you're good to go. If you don't, you might want to start looking at fixed index annuities, particularly for the fixed portion of your portfolio. It might be as much as 40 or 50%. Why? Because they pay a much higher, they're willing to guarantee a higher rate than you can get in treasuries or CDs right now. The other money, how should that be invested? Should be invested in a diversified uh, equity portfolio. And again, you need to ask yourself, what kind of risk taker am I? I'm going to tell you, if you're not 50-50, if you don't have 50% of the money in stocks, you're just not going to make enough, even with bond prices the way they are now, even if they start to go up because they're the interest rate on the bonds right now, a really good interest rate is 3%. That's a really good interest rate. 3% on half a million bucks is $15,000 a year. Not a lot, right? So if you were going to average 6 or 7% on that money and you decided to take out 4 or 5%, that goes a much longer way to help you reach those goals now. And I don't know, people's heads are probably spinning and it probably just changed the dial because I started getting into the math. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I can impre- I know how you feel. It's, it's, it takes a while to get your head around this. The bottom line is you need to come up with a, a plan. It doesn't have to be super complicated. In fact, you know what I'm going to do next week? I'm going to come up with a, uh, a sample plan based on situations I see a lot. And then I'll just go through how we came up with, how I came up with the, the various options that would help somebody reach their goals in retirement. And that's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, retirement, sh- you should be able to enjoy it. And by the way, I'm, I am not a big fan of people retiring, quitting their jobs and sitting at home. I've been doing this for 30 years now. And when people do that, their life expectancy is kind of short. You know, just something I've noticed. I have a uh, um, long history in this and I've been paying attention. So I've never retired, which is cool because I like what I do. And uh, it's not that hard physically. I, I have to force myself to get out and exercise. I mean, I, th- that's the probably the hardest part of my job is pushing away from the desk. <laughs> but the uh, but I really like the other. It's very it's fascinating, you know, and it's always changing a little bit. You know, it's generally there's not a, a whole lot of really fast, rapid change, but you have to keep up with it. I'd say probably somewhere around 10 percent a year. You know, so over a 10 year time period, uh, almost everything has changed. And uh, I'd say that that's pretty accurate. And if you don't do it every day, I just I'm just amazed that some people uh, can do this and they can't. I mean, I've, I've seen them. They've come into the office. We've, they've, there's no cost to talk about your situation. But now they hear the music. That means they're about to kick me off the air. So I'm just going to tell you, if you have a question, give me a call. My name is Bill Bullington, BullingtonCapital.com. Have a good week, everybody. Good luck and good investing. You just caught another edition of the Bullington Capital Report, broadcasting every Saturday at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and you'd like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or online at BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. 
The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.